Daryl Rowe is facing a maximum life sentence after being found guilty of deliberately infecting five men with HIV and trying to do the same to five more. So we started talking, um, obviously, you know, on Grinder, and then the conversation kind of turned a little bit weird, and he suggested to um, have unprotected sex, which I was completely against. As his victims began to fall ill, Roe was arrested and questioned. I thought I had it under control, you know, obviously yeah. pushing him off me and, you know, kind of telling him that's not what we agreed on, and then he, you know, I handed him the condom and... We proceeded. <laughs> you have HIV? No. Um, have you had a HIV test recently? Um, not recently. They said, yeah, you tested positive. And that was when, you know, that being told that was just something that one, I never wanted to hear in my entire life because going back to my childhood, yeah. um, both my parents, you know, died of AIDS, you know? Yeah. and. I always used protection, I was always safe, like, you know, I, I was always took care of that because I didn't want that to be my future, I didn't want that to be my story as well. Lenny, thank you so much for joining me on the sit-down today, mate. How are you getting on? Very well, thank you for having me. It's my pleasure. It's uh, We've had a little good a good chat beforehand about a number of things, some of which I can't talk, nothing dodgy, just just some personal <laughs> things as well, which I'm going through at the moment, but we can't talk about on air, out of respect to others. Um, but it is great to have you on. Um, for people that don't know, can you tell yourself, uh, tell them a little bit about yourself and, and what you get up to at the moment? Uh, so my name is Lenny. Um, I currently <laughs> live in New York City. Um, lived in the UK for uh, 15 years and um, raising two young puppies, which are <laughs> crazy. <laughs> Just yeah, Fre frequent members of your Instagram story, I've noticed. Like. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. I, I I tend to have them on there. It's, you know, any content, so <laughs> I need yeah, yeah, to yeah. add them. So if we go back to your, your time in England, and that's why, by the way, I wanted, wanted you to bring it up because your accent throws me off every time. You're like, oh my God, yeah. And so basically I've got, and I'm like, whoa, where did that English come from? Like the English yeah. accent comes in every now and again. So, it does, um, it does. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I thought I'd mention that. <laughs> but the reason we've got you on today um, is to talk about your story and about your process in regards to being di diagnosed uh, positive for HIV. Um, right. That started, uh, and that happened all in England, which is probably a reason why you, why you left as well, right? To, to get away um mm -hmm. could you tell us a little bit about how you got diagnosed and how you got given hiv um right so i uh met uh daryl oh god i forgot his name bro <laughs> daryl Ro. that's a good thing <laughs> actually i <laughs> yeah. would not forget that name for quite a long time so um yeah daryl Ro. um we met on an app called grinder um mm -hmm. So it's a dating app where most people call it a, 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 an app for sex. Um, I We met on there. Um, we started chatting. Well, you know, to go back, I, I was going through a, a really bad breakup at the time. Um, mm -hmm. I was married and my partner and I have seven years. We obviously decided to call it split, to call it an end, you know, end to our relationship. And that was quite a hard um, split. So I was going through a really hard time. And so obviously I kind of went on to, you know, grinder thinking i need a you know good time you know um and a rebound, ended up, a rebound whatever yeah. it was whatever yeah. you call it a hookup you know whatever the situation was um and i ended up meeting daryl and um you know he came over um and it was just one of those things that like you know we obviously hooked up but there was a lot more to it um do you want me to tell you like all that or, yeah, I mean, that would be, yeah, that'd okay. be great. If you're open to talking about that, yeah, 100%. Yeah, no, no, I'm totally fine. So we started talking, um, obviously, you know, on Grinder, and, um, you know, we decided that we were going to meet up. And then the conversation kind of turned a little bit weird, and obviously he suggested to um, have unprotected sex, which I was completely against. Um, and then obviously he agreed to, you know, to obviously using protection. Um, finally came over to my place. I and I opened the door, and he was there. It seemed like a nice guy. You know, we started chatting immediately. Uh, he came upstairs. I uh, had a shower, <laughs> and then um, after he came out, he you know 
proceeded to, you know, we proceeded to like hook up or whatever. And then he proceeded to like, you know, start without a condom. And I was like, wait a minute, this is not what we agreed on. Yeah. Uh, so I had to kind of like push him off, off me. Mm-hmm. And it was kind of a, a weird, I should have known then like that, that was, you know, a, a, a red, red flag. flag, a red flag. But, you know, I thought I had it under control, you know, obviously yeah. pushing him off me and, you know, kind of telling him that's not what we agreed on. And then he, you know, I handed him the condom and we proceeded <laughs> to <laughs> what we <were> doing. <laughs> yeah. Um, and yeah, and that's really what I remember. And then, you know, fast forward a couple of days later, you know, I get a phone call. Um, well, I should go back to that the night after that, where I started getting a little bit weird and he was kind of getting a little possessive over messaging, um, asking like, you know, like, are we together kind of thing or what, you know, it was just, it was a very weird conversation and I just kind of blocked him. Yeah. So then a couple nights after that, I get a phone call from a, um, from a private or blocked number and it was consistent. It was a consistent ringing. I think I had about, you know five calls uh in a row and i finally answered and i was like hello who is this and um i get you know it was him on the other end saying oh i ripped the condom you know um i got you you know you're gonna burn kind of thing you know like being really horrible calling me stupid american you know those kind of things and um i got a little kind of like anxious at the time when that when that conversation when he was saying that on the phone when I was living on my own at the time and he knew where I was living yeah so I was thinking like okay is this is he gonna show up at my door like what is gonna happen now like is there what is the extent of this this you know interaction um I didn't think anything of it because I just, I remember we used a condom, you know, and I was like, well, yeah. I don't remember seeing anything like, I, you know, I didn't see, don't recall seeing anything that was looked ripped. Right. Yeah. Um, especially when he was walking away um, and we had finished, but that conversation just kept going. And I was more afraid for like, you know, something might, hap- ha- might happen to me like because, you know, he loves where I live. And yeah. was he quite a physically intimidating guy or was it just the fact that he knew where you lived and anyone can turn up with any weapon, you know? Well, I, you know, thinking about the, 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 the night of, or the night that he came over, he tried to force himself onto me with, yeah, without, right. you know, protection after yeah. we agreed to do that. Um, I don't know. It just kind of made me feel like, well, what is, what is he capable of after mm. that? And now calling me and saying that he had done such horrible thing and you know, that I got you, you know, you're going to burn. Like, it's just kind of, it, it made me, it made me afraid. Mm. Um, so I went and stayed with my friend that night who lived down the road. Um, and then that was it. So I kind of, you know, didn't answer any calls that, <laughs> that didn't yeah. go if who the person was um and then yeah and then that was kind of like the extent of that and i remember i was with my friend who i stayed that night um fast forward a couple you know um weeks after that i remember seeing him in brighton like walking around we were at, at this this pub called the dover um and I saw him and I was like, oh, my God, that's that's that crazy guy, you know, that's yeah. Scottish because my friend is Scottish. And I obviously was telling her that he was, you know, from Edinburgh. And, yeah. And she's from Glasgow and whatever. And she's like, yeah, whatever. Blah, blah, blah. And anyway, so then I my parents come to uh, to Brighton because mm-hmm. they were originally going to come when my partner and I were together. But we had split in early November. And so they came anyway because had their tickets purchase and i was really sick like i had like i remember i was just like extremely sick um and my mom's like are you okay like you just look you don't look great and yeah um it was like something i've never experienced in my life um it was pretty horrible i didn't think anything of it i went to the doctors they prescribed me some antibiotics and they were like you have an infection and i took it and it kind of went away um and then i met somebody that we started dating in january Mm-hmm. Um, so I had met Daryl on the 13th of November, mm-hmm. something that very unlucky number. Yeah. Um, and this happened obviously, um, you know, in January where I, when I found out, so I was dating somebody 
and we had decided that we really liked each other and we got on really well and we wanted to get tested together. Yeah. You know, if we were going to take our relationship any further. Um, and we went and did our, our thing. And then I got to call a text, um, a call <coughs> on my phone from the clinic um, and a voicemail saying, please call because we need to discuss your results. Now, I've been tested many times prior. Mm -hmm. You know, they always send you a text saying you're negative. No need for further action. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, when they say something like that to you that, you know, we need to discuss your results and then you get a text saying the same thing. I kind of was freaking out at that point. And yeah. I was living with my friend, um, Julie. Um, I had moved into her place temporarily because um, I had moved out of the house that my partner and I, my ex-partner and I shared in Brighton. Um, anyway, I called them and they were like, yeah, you need to come into the clinic. And she was like, oh, for God's sake, just tell them, on, just tell them on the phone. The guy's like, you know, in bits, like he's, he's really, you know, like nervous, like just say to him. And, and, you know, they said, yeah, you tested positive. And that was when, you know, that being told that was just something that one, I never wanted to hear in my entire life because, you know, going back to my childhood, yeah. um, both my parents, you know, died of AIDS, you know, yeah. and that was something that I was trying to never, I mean, I was, I always used protection. I was always safe. Like, you know, I, I was always took care of that because I didn't want to, I didn't want that to be my future. I didn't want that to be my story as well. And, you know, you know, being gay and obviously being around friends who've tested positive and, you know, you hear it all, all the time, you know, it's like, I don't want to be that person. Um, and that was just, you know, like, I just felt like my life was over. And immediately you, 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 you have this feeling that no one's going to ever want you, that your life's over. And, you know, that's what it felt like. Yeah. So, um, I went through a lot of emotions in my head at that moment. And I remember having a conversation with, um, you know, Julie and my friend, and she was like, do you, do you, do you know what it could have been? Or who could have been? And I, I just didn't have no idea. And then like, all of a sudden I just had this, this, this chill in my neck and I, my the back of my neck. And I was like, Oh my God. Oh my God. So the next day I went into the clinic because they said, please come in the next day so we can, you know, discuss further in detail your results and obviously start course of action of, of treatment for you. And um, I went with my my boyfriend at the time, and he was being really supportive um, um, with everything. So he came there and was you know there for me. And then the nurse comes in, and we have sort of discussing, you know, what happened. And she said, "Do you know who would have, you know, how you would have caught or where?" And I said, "Well, this guy, I got you know these really bad." Um, messages like or calls and like you know te you know whatever and he was just saying all these rude things and she was like is he is he scottish and i was like yeah and he and it, then it was like well okay one second and they brought somebody else in and the person was like we've had four other people say the same exact thing wow. that tasted positive in the clinic and i was like what so it was just like it all put two into you know i was like putting it all together and it was like yeah they have basically had the tested positive this guy has been harassing them you know, it said kind of similar thing. Yeah. Um, and so they were like, well, what do you want to do? And I was like, well, I'm going to get the police. Can you, you know, get me in? whatever. And so they were able to get me a contact. And that sergeant came over or, you know, came over that evening um, or that afternoon after I left the clinic um, to where I lived. And I remember we went to the pub next door um, and you know, I came all the details. I said, I think this is where he lives. He's in um, Saltine. Um, you know, he's staying with these uh, family friends or this, you know, family. His name is this, you know, blah, blah, blah. this is his number. <clears throat> and then they were, they caught him two days later. Wow. Um, and so I remember going through that whole process and, you know, he denied the whole thing. Did he? And yeah, he's in, of course he did not. He's like, I don't have it. You know, I, I don't know these people. I don't know who they're talking about, what they're saying. Come to find out they put him through the system and they found out that he was actually wanted in Edinburgh for 10 complaints of the same exact thing. What? So, yeah. So, cause they had, a, there was a warrant out for his arrest. They had to basically hand him over back to 
um, Scotland. So they were like, well, we have to, he's got to go back up there. And it was just a weird, it was, the whole thing was just crazy. I was like thrown into this movie all of a sudden. It was like, my life just became prime, like a, you know, one of those time life, whatever you call those mo prime time movies yeah. after school special. And I was like, oh my God, this is crazy. So I was like thrown into this world of like now i have to go through this and i have to go and you know see a lineup of people and like the pictures and pick them out from a lineup and go to a spec a special protection house and do a, a complete you know police um uh evidence recording of everything that happened every little detail clothing you name it what was temperature like it was crazy you know mm. um and then this went on for for quite a while and you know they remanded him in custody and then they had to let him go because you know whatever um i was going through such a hard time at the time because i was like this is not healthy for me one i just went through a breakup then like i went through this and then i've just broken up with the person i was just dating because i couldn't deal with that and so i was like i need to go back to new york you know i went back i came to new york um this happened what I found that in January went through all this process. Well, but to rewind that, <laughs> um, I started a job in London, which was didn't work out for me because I couldn't handle it. Um, and I remember going through that whole process and I was just I, I could not really get to the sense of reality. I was just not living. I wasn't living, you know, um, so I like checked into a hotel and like an idiot tried to commit suicide. Right. Um, you know and it was like it was so it was it was why was i doing this and i think about that now and it was like i had no emotion there was like no like it was like it was like a running wheel but there was nothing going on inside of it mm -hmm. um and i just tried to end it and luckily a friend of mine called me like wouldn't stop calling me she's like i know you're in london let's hang out <laughs> <laughs> i was like oh my god i was like please get here right now because yeah. i'm I don't, I don't know what i'm gonna do and she was like what so I told her immediately, obviously, she came over and we went out um, that night. What, so. what about the diagnosis and, yeah, specifically the diagnosis made you feel that low? I think it was a lot. It was more than the diagnosis for me. I think it was the fact that I had to relive, like, my past, you know, yeah. my, my childhood again. And I had to be that stereotype that people think you know like oh he's gay of course he's got you know hiv you know that's that all came into my head you know like that my parents passing away i had to relive all of that i had to relive every little step like how did they die like what was it like you know like of course those things go through your head um because you think that's exactly what's going to happen to you mm -hmm. um you know so that's what really kind of got me down and how am I going to explain this to people? How am I going to move on with my life? Who's going to want me now? Like, you know, how am I going to be in a relationship? Like, how am I going to move on with my life? Yeah. All those things go through your head, you know? Yeah. And you think that at the time when you find out, it's a, it's like a, a life sentence, right? I mean, it is a life sentence, but like you're a death sentence, yeah. you know? You think that you're going to die because that's kind of what happens, but... You know, times have changed. I realize that now that, you know, I'm very healthy and um, it's not, you know, what I thought, you know, at that time. Yeah. One of my questions was like, you know, did you think it was a death sentence? Um, and, you know, how did that make you feel at the time? And then second of all, has that in any way, and this might be assuming and you can say no to this question, hence, hence the nature of a question. Um, has it in any way been like liberating now that like, okay, like I feel thought I was going to die, I now know I'm not, anything I now have is like, fuck me, it's a bonus. Like, do you know what I mean? It's like, oh, like, I'm really going to try and live life. You really know the meaning of life. Am I hitting the nail on the head there slightly or, or am I completely off? Yeah, I mean, I definitely, I think there is a, there was a sense of, I mean, there wasn't a sense of relief. There was like this, like, okay, once I figured out that things weren't going to, be what I thought and there weren't going to be a life sentence and I was going to end up like my parents um, because I had resources, I had to support, I had help, you know, um, doing that. One of the things going back on that, I decided to join when I found out about my diagnosis, I joined um, a research 
uh, program. When I was, you know, diagnosed, obviously they came in and they were like, wow, you're not wow. Yeah. <laughs> they were like, you, you know, you are a perfect um, test subject for this new study that we want to do. It was called the river study. And it was to try to eradicate, um, you know, uh, the HIV uh, cells, the HIV virus yeah. that's like dormant in your body by introducing this cancer um, treatment. Uh -huh. And they wanted to see if it would work. So I took part of that because I was like, well, at least if this is my fate, let me try to do something about yeah. this, you know, let me try to help out. So that was a step for me to kind of be take part of trying to help out, you know, now that I'm that I'm one of, you know, that I'm now one of, you know, I now have this, you know. Um, so that was also kind of a, a, a helping process for yeah. me. And coming home, you know, being with my family, I came home and after I tried to commit suicide and after I, I couldn't handle, I was like, I need to be in a safe space, in a safe space with family and friends that um, I can just be myself, you know, um, not that I didn't have that, yeah. you know, I did, but I had just gone through a breakup. I didn't have that extended family like I had. I had my friends, but I needed to be around my, my parents, yeah. you know, my adopted parents. Yeah, yeah. That you, you say how like oh you, you you know when you were saying all those emotions that are rushing through your head how am I going to tell people is it a death sentence all these sorts of things you know what what year was this by the way that that all of this happened um I met Daryl in 2015 okay. of November and I found out in uh January 26 2006 right so five years ago sorry 2016 yeah. 2016, <laughs> 2016. <laughs> yeah five so five years ago people especially someone who had such a close you know connection maybe that's not the right way of phrasing it but you know because you, your parents had died from it your biological parents you know you were aware of it you were very conscious of safe sex and 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 things like that even someone who was educated to that degree on it didn't understand the full complexion of the virus so can you imagine someone who, who never even thought about it let alone you know m maybe in the gay community there might be a little bit more awareness about that but of course it's not it's not a gay disease like they used to think anyone can get it right and so let's say you're a straight person and, and, and there's less information even outside of the gay community and you get it the stigma the lack of education on it is what really struck right. me and, 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 and the fact that you still s suffered with that sort of lack of lack of education i found really interesting you know mm -hmm. yeah i mean that and that's something i think about i'm like wow like i you know obviously experienced this firsthand of what this was like and then you know i was kind of like angry at myself for being so ignorant about that you know and you know understanding that there that your life isn't over but like that's not what i wanted my life to be you know so that's why i was so upset mm -hmm. about it and, you know, I think that, you know, if you ask me would I have dated somebody with, you know, HIV back then, I probably would say yeah. no, because, again, I think everybody feels, it, you know, there's it's lack of it's lack of information and it's, you know, not understanding. And I think that most people do really need to think that, you know, they need to really, especially if you're gay, you should really understand that um, you should have a lot more understanding of, you know, what what this is you know yeah. um so i just yeah i mean i decided that i was going to educate myself and really understand this if this was going to be my path in life that i would know everything that there is with it um and, and try to educate other people um and bring awareness to it you know and that's why i've done the videos and the documentaries that i that I, the documentary that i did yeah and, and that's i think another huge point isn't it because the people you know, I don't maybe suffer is not the right word. Uh, you know, the, the people that have it, right? Um, it's all well and good them being educated on it, but it, you know, really for for people that have it, it's only good if everyone else is educated on it as well. Because I'm sure going around in public and you know X, Y, and Z having these misconceptions mm -hmm. and these you know and, and, and treating you differently, that's the real thing. Obviously, you can educate yourself, but you want to be treated like how you should be treated, you know. And if other people exactly. are uneducated on it, that's no good. So it's getting the people, everyone educated it, eating educated on it, not just the people that have it as well, you know. Exactly. It's really bringing, yeah, trying to bring awareness and and you know educating everybody. Like I, you know, try to educate my family on it, you know. 
anybody who's we you know i'm very open about the conversation i'm very open about what what's happened to me um you, you can't really kind of hide something especially if you've done a documentary <laughs> and a, <laughs> yeah, yeah you know newspaper an article so you know i'm always up, up open for discussion about it I'm very open about my past some of my family and my parents um and i think that um you know whatever i can do to educate or you know inform people i, I think that's um it's always important to try to do that you know yeah 100 percent. and and you know i respect you greatly for doing that because it's and you know to, to go back through and um relive it to an extent or, or, or speak about it constantly it, it can't can't be a nice thing um but but yeah, it seems like you've got to a level of acceptance there and and and, and then i'm now using it in your benefit and to educate other people and as you said like that's not and again i'm, I'm speaking for you here but 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 you know t t tell me if i'm wrong th that's not how <laughs> you saw your life going but you know where you said that okay well if this is like the way my life is going to be when you were talking mm -hmm. about the research program, you were like, okay, well, this is the way I'm going to go. And it's the same thing I feel like potentially with speaking about it so openly. If this is what my life's going to be, I might as well grab it by both hands and run with it and just try and make the best of the situation. And it, you're, you're right. really doing that. So big respect for doing that, by the way. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. yeah, I I really wanted to take over, you know, I wanted to take control of the feeling that I was feeling um, after I had gone to that because I was like really angry. Um you know, and that anger really kind of motivated me, you know, that kind of motivated me to do something with, um, with this, you know, with what, what had happened to me. So I'm going to take the tragedy and I'm going to try to make something out of it. Yeah. Um, so that's why I came forward and I was doing, you know, I did a article, uh, for, um, I forgot for what it was. I think it was, was it red? Was it Buzzfeed? Oh, it was Buzzfeed. Buzzfeed. Yeah. yeah, I, did yeah, Buzzfeed. yeah, yeah. Yep. I did an article way in the beginning um where i brought some kind of light to it and i was like talking about it um and it was like in that was you know come forward kind of yeah. you know if you are sorry those are my dogs in the <laughs> it's okay um <laughs> the you know come forward if this is if you have been you know that i was like trying to make people just really kind of you know just come forward and, and let's get this guy so i really campaigned to try to bring as much awareness as i could you know, I did a documentary with or an, a news um, with BBC, but they obviously had to hide my face. And it was talking about that whole experience. And, and again, it was like, if you've been affected by this, like, you know, really kind of come forward, you know, let's get this bastard. Yeah. Um, and that was really touching to hear that some people, you know, did come forward because they did read that and they did hear that, yeah, wow. you know, and I was told that by um the lovely woman Charlotte who did the documentary for the BBC <laughs> and you know I I uh, was very you know very uh proud happy that I did that I was very proud and very happy that I took part of that because you know it was it was good to hear that yeah you know that people felt that they had that somebody that they couldn't really kind of just help them come forward yeah and, and that you um, had a and, such a positive impact <clears throat> uh in one helping other people come forward and, 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 and open mm -hmm. about it more and two, getting such a knob behind bars, you know what I mean? Like, like you know, getting such an evil person Absolutely. behind bars. So you've had a, you've had yeah. a positive impact twofold. Um, so, something that, that really struck me in um, the documentary was the, and, and you spoke about it there a little bit, you mentioned control. And in the documentary you said, if I had had unprotected sex and uh, I could almost like take responsibility for it, I was dumb. It was my fault and we move on, right? Right. But it wasn't. You, you you took all the precautions and you did all the right things and still yeah. it happened to you. What did that lack of control, what effect did that have on you? And how did you know how did that impact you in your sort of dealing with the diagnosis? I mean, it's still something I think about. Um you know, again, it's like you do everything that you're told to do or that you know to do, like, you know, protected sex or you protect yourself, you put the seatbelt on, right? Mm -hmm. And it's just kind of, you know, it was that right of mine that was completely taken away, you know. Um, I still deal with that. And now I'm see I am see speaking to somebody about that because it's now turned into a trauma. Yes. Yeah. Um, and that whole thing is, you know, is a traumatic experience I have to go through. Um, you know, and again, it does, it, it affected me because it was like, it really hurt. It really ruined my trust level with mm. people. Mm. Um, 
I you know I'm in a in a very happy relationship right now, and you know obviously I I'm glad that I am. Yeah. You know, but into the lead up of that, I was single for a very long time mm-hmm. because I just didn't trust people. You know, and I think that's what really affected me, and it's something I still think about consistently. Yeah. So I'm not 100% over that yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I'm working on it, you know. Um, I'm not going to say that I'm, you know, it's all perfect now. Um, but yeah, so. Yeah, I get, and I guess maybe that's why mm-hmm. you've taken control of the situation as much as you as you right. have, right? Because so much yeah. control was taken away from you. I mean, I might be reading things into it too deeply, but, you know, it probably, you know, does that sound about right? You're taking control of the situation because that was taken away from you? A lot of it, yeah, a lot of it is, is is really trying to help out, you know, trying to be the strength that other people didn't have. Yeah. Um, and the anger that that caused, that whole situation caused, um, um, you know, into the lead up of all of this and then finding that out and having that happen to, you, to me um, really just kind of made me, yeah, just be like, come forward, angry, you know, like I, when I went to New York, I found out that um when he was remanded in custody they let him go and then he went on the run yeah, you know wow. <laughs> and i was like wait what so that even just made me more pissed off i was like this is this this is some serious stuff and like you know he could be doing this while he's on the run to people i mean you see even the documentary you, you know they they found him in in newcastle i think it was yeah. um or wherever the hell he was somewhere in, somewhere in the north um and you know that was just that pissed me off even more yeah. because it was like okay he is like he's dangerous like we need to you need to stop him like he is gonna do this to more people yeah. you know and I like you know even I think back I'm like I'm such a smart person like I you know how the hell did I let that happen to me you know um, but I can't live in the past I can't you know woulda coulda shoulda kind of thing it's I gotta move forward and that's what I'm trying to do 100% why do you think he did it why do you think he did yeah. it yeah because he's fucking crazy. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I think he's got some issues. I mean, and I know that everybody has issues, you know, and... Yeah, but come on, Lenny. Um, come on, mate, mate. No, sorry, Lenny. You're not getting away with that one, mate. Yeah, I think it's, everyone's got some issues. Everyone's got some issues. This guy is the most crazy guy of all time. You know, I, I maybe leave my pots and pans out. They're my issues, Lenny. This guy's got le- issues on a different level. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. And I think, you know, thinking, listening to what ha- happened to him, what, ha- what happened to him as a kid... And, you know, being adopted and all that stuff. I think that, you know, I was adopted, yeah. right? I had parents who passed away, but I dealt with things differently. Yeah. And, you know, I guess he was one of the lucky, the unlucky few that just didn't know how to handle that, didn't mm. know how to deal with it, you know? Um, so, yeah, I just think that, I hope he realizes the shit that he's done to people mm. and how he's changed people's lives because, you know, he's now under, you know, behind bars for it. That's really interesting how you speak about that in that I then I was coming at it a little bit more from a nature standpoint, like this guy is a bad guy, therefore that's the way he's done it. The way you were speaking about it then was a little bit more, it was his, you know, his bad circumstances and he's just taking it the wrong way. What, do you think he's a bad person to his core or do you think it's just circumstantial and it's just, it's sad that things have gone that way for him? Oh, I think he's got definitely some some issues. <laughs> some definitely some some issues with you know. He's possessive, so obviously he wants to keep things the way he you know. It's like he wants to have control of other people's emotions, and like he wants to control that. So he wants to be like the puppet, you know, the the puppet master. Yeah. Um, you know, to continually do what he did to people, and you know do something and then throw it back in their face to see their reaction and their emotion. It was like, he's getting off on that, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah, I think he's an idiot. Of course. I know if, if I saw him, I would probably, you know, kill yeah, him. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, I wouldn't yeah, do that. No. Don't quote Not me on, on record. He wouldn't um, kill him on record. <laughs> right. But I can say that I would for you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I probably, you know, punch him in the yeah. face. Maybe, maybe a lot more yeah, than that. Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, but I think that, yeah, I think, I hope that, you know, you know, I, I don't know. I just, I, yeah, yeah. stupid yeah. idiot. <laughs> yeah. <know>? Yeah. <laughs> what effects did it have on you then um, physically uh, when, when, you know, fr- from the beginning and, and to now? Because you said 
you're healthy now. You're the most glowing man I've ever seen in my whole life. Look at you. De you, de you, def <laughs> you definitely you. moisturize, Lenny, because that is a, is a glowing face. You, I have you got to. a glowing face going on there. I, yeah, listen, wait, listen, when you get to, I'm almost 41. No, no, Lenny, doing. stop. There's no way you're, for, there's yeah. no way you're 41. <laughs> you yes, know? I'm 41. I was born in 1980. Wow. Yes. See, the thing is, 41. before the show started, everyone watching, I said, or maybe it was in the show. I went, oh yeah, I'm 2000, so I, oh, I'm 2000, born in 2000, so I'm 20. <laughs> and Lenny laughed and I went, yeah, yeah I thought he's probably 30. You know, 30, 30 <laughs> maybe, yeah, 30, 32, 33. You're, four, you're, you're double my age. You don't look it, put it that way, you don't look it. I could be your father. Yeah, yeah, yes, <laughs> you could. That that's would so be, weird. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, <laughs> um, from, yeah, physical effects, from when you were first diagnosed, you said you got very sick, and then through that, what is that process like? And then obviously the medication helping and stuff like that. What, what were the physical effects that it had on you? Yeah, being really sick. I mean, I had lymph nodes that I didn't think I had in places of my body. They were just, <laughs> you know, like, I was like, wow, I didn't never realize there was like all these like balls behind your neck wow. to go all the way down. So um, that was really weird and like this constant like, sore throat that wouldn't just wouldn't go away mm -hmm. um that was kind of you know it went through a, a a spin for me because you know getting better you know when i was a kid i was bulimic uh, i was going through right. a lot of a lot of time a lot of difficult things because of my parents dying you know God, you yeah, try yeah, to control yeah. certain situations and that brought that back on after when I moved back to New York, so I lost a lot of weight. Mm -hmm. Everybody said I looked, you know, I looked great, but I was obviously yeah, you know, no, basically I, not eating and throwing up. Yeah. So, you know, it brought back a lot of emotional things. You know, you try to deal with certain things. Um, you know, I was drinking a lot. I mean, I still drink, but, yeah. <laughs> um, you know, it was like, you, you know, you kind of do things. I was, you know, doing drugs again and yeah. those kind of things. Um, now, I obviously trying to get away from this COVID, yeah. <laughs> COVID belly <laughs> that we've been dealing with. But I'm healthy, you know, um, I, I feel great. You know, I've been able to kind of focus in my career and, you know, just, yeah, really kind of stay. So now you don't, you don't, there's no effect, there's no physical effects on, on you now because of HIV? No, so I'm undetectable, um, okay. which is, was, you know, when I went through the course of the uh, study that I went through, the the river program that um you know they they gave me medication right away and i was like on five pills and it was you know so within like three months i was undetectable um wow. and being undetectable is yeah so so just to put it in perspective when i was diagnosed i was like my count was off the charts it was like you know 600 and whatever what thousand and this is the amount of know, virus copies, spits that are yeah copies yeah, yeah. So now I, to be undetectable, it's literally under 20. Wow. So under 20. So I, like if you were to, you know, if I were to take a test, I would come out negative because I am undetectable. And the medication that I take is, you know, on, you know, one pill a day and it keeps you, you know, healthy. So what was the med medication like back then? That, that process of that research process and other, other, what, what were you taking? What, what was that process like? It was, so I was taking um, a combination because um, usually with, you know, your, your HIV medication, it's like, there's like three different pills that kind of antivirals. Um, the one I take now has got, you know, two or three, whatever, in, included God, yeah. in one. Um, so they were giving me, you know, these three different uh, separate ones plus uh, a new one that they were testing out. Mm -hmm. um, so that was, that. that's what it was like. It was, I think, a Truvada and some other stuff that... Um, is is prep is what people would take to um not catch hiv yeah. so um yeah so that was that was for a year that i went through that and oh. then after i let, you know finished the program i decided to change my medication but yeah. you know been knock on wood have been undetectable since um yeah since june of 2016 that's unbelievable within three months mm -hmm. of this and was this an un mm -hmm. un un uh, maybe I don't want to say unofficial, but this was like an uncertain research program that you were were going through, right? And 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 it worked. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah, I mean, it, it, I mean, well, it did. I mean, for me, for myself, it worked. For my like God, my yeah. medical, it worked. The research itself did. It was it was too, it didn't work out. Uh, but obviously, the medication that I was on really helped out. 
Um, so that, but I was glad that I took part of something, even though if it didn't really kind of make that much of a difference, right. it was still something that I was a part of and I wanted to continue on being a part of these things, yeah, you know, 100%. um, because it's, it's important, you know, it's important to really try to make a difference. If now this is my story, yeah. if this is something that, you know, is my life, yeah. you know, you have, you have to do something about it. Right. You say you were undetectable. You're on, un you are undetectable. Um, what, so there's so many misconceptions with HIV, isn't there? Like, you know, drinking out the same glass, um, um, uh, kissing on the lips, um, all, all that sort of stuff. I mean, I'm sure you've got... What are some of the things that you've had from the public or, you know, potential partners or anything like that uh, that when people just haven't understood what HIV is? I haven't really had personally um, to me... I haven't had that happen to me or... Um, of that discriminate or that discrimination or that kind of like prejudice, you know yeah. fear that other people have yeah prejudice from people um but i've heard it you know when my mom was passing away you know of course other family members were like oh you know don't know you know they would come over and they wouldn't drink or eat anything and i think that's just you know again that's um you know, not having the knowledge and just being really ignorant. Yeah, because it was so new at the time then as well, right? So it was all, it was all, you know, coming. I'm sure in 10 years time, we'll go with COVID. We'll go, oh, if you just do this, this and this. Yeah. Like, do you know what I mean? It won't be a big thing. But because it was so new then, it was like, oh my God, this is, they, they, did, they didn't know anything about it. I think where there's less excuse is now when people are like that. Because now we know about it, right. or we should at least, well, some people know a lot about it. A lot of other people don't. Um, and it's, it's, I was just speaking to you, before as well I had a great sex education right I had a fantastic sex education right I went to private school so you know don't hammer me too much for that in the comments but I went to a, I went to I went to a private school and my parents are both Dutch liberal people speak about sex very openly at school sex education I loved it as well me sex education I was always like I, I don't know I just I just enjoyed the conversation I've had a sex expert on and I have no qualms about speaking about it um I quite enjoyed it so I was like right so I had a great sex education and then still me all of a sudden i have i i don't know f the full extent of it i mean you said before as well you're undetectable right what does that mean oh being undetectable is is you know very different to what it used what it was and you know undetectable means that you know i could have unprotected sex with my partner and there's no transmission you know if I, you know, there was a wound and somebody else had a wound. There's no transmission. There's no way that I could pass it on to somebody else. Um, and I think that's something that a lot of people, you know, most people who have HIV in the world are going to be undetectable because they're not, they're on medication. Um, you know, and I think that's kind of what, you know, the ultimate, the ultimate, your ultimate goal is. Um, so I think that's something that a lot of people don't understand. Um, and they're mm. still a little bit kind of, uneducated about you know the the fact that you can have a normal life you know like if i wanted to have a child you know i could uh there's ways that i could you know have my there's a process that it's called a sperm wash or sperm watching <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> it's like watching a spell uh, a sperm wash. um there's the yeah, there's wash a your way car. yeah <laughs> they can wash your car so you take it to the laundry so you take your sperm to the laundry <laughs> <laughs> to, the la to the laundrette yeah. two quid a pop like that <laughs> yeah exactly I mean I wouldn't do that but obviously I don't want yeah. to get arrested but you know you would <laughs> you can there's a process it's a little, it's a little yeah. costly but you know I could still have children if I wanted to if my partner and I wanted to have a kid I could you know yeah. there's things I'm, I, my life isn't over it's not ended yeah um, and your life expectancy isn't isn't shortened in any way at all no not at all my life expectancy is the same as anybody else as long as like you know we all have to keep healthy and you yeah, know, work yeah, out yeah. And, and eat good and i haven't been yeah. recently but um i think that yeah i think nothing has changed you know i mean things have changed i should say but my life before is still the same even i think I'm a little bit more healthier than i used to be back then you know because i just yeah. feel like i want to be a bit more you know i stopped smoking yeah. i stopped doing you know smoking weed all those different things you know yeah, yeah, um yeah so those are things that you know it's just really pushed me to be better you know it's just unbelievable the fact that again i i thought i was really clued up lenny i thought honestly <laughs> i thought i thought i was like god you know what i know i know about this shit but the mm -hmm. like the fact that you can have unprotected sex with someone 
and or if, if there's a cut, if there's a wound, open wound, and you're it, blood, it, you're fine. Like you're nothing, it, you're not any different from a, from a health standpoint to anyone else. And that, why do you think people don't know that? I, just, I think because they, I think a lot of people don't know that is because they just don't. They just, it's not part of their world. So they're like, well, I'm not yeah. gonna, I don't need to know that. You know, like, I don't need yeah. to to learn uh, about that. But I think it's important if, you know, if you are sexually active and you have kids or if you, you know, I think it's important to understand these things because you don't know. It could, you know, it could happen to you. It could happen to somebody that you know. You need to be ready to help them out. 100%, you know? yeah. So I think that's it. You know, when it's not in your world or in your, you know, in your you know your view you don't really pay attention to it until it happens yeah. to you you know yeah um so yeah i think something that's been big uh over in the uk i don't know if you've caught any of it is uh, a docu like not documentary like a, a series called it's a sin i don't know if you've if, you, if you're aware of that in america at all or yeah it's on you, hbo you it? i haven't watched what? it i've been meaning to watch it and a friend said to me it's kind of it's kind of you know little little um hard to watch and i was like okay whatever i mean i'm, I'm not gonna i'll give it a go i'll still watch it yeah. just <laughs> it's it's i mean I, again i i can't speak on how that will affect you in you know you know being gay and having hiv and right. because you know what something that struck me is that it was like fucking hell like if you were having sex at this time like and and you know unprotected it was just you it was just rampant, especially. I think you said you were in San Francisco at one point. That's where it started, I think, as well. Um, mm. a HIV, or at least that's you know that's one of the, the first places well, it, it was broke huge, out. Yeah, huge gay. Com I mean, huge gay community over there, so it was really affected in major yeah. way. Major yeah, way. and it was just that I think has. I mean, I was going to ask you, have you seen it? What did you think of it? But I, 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 you know, from my point of view, everyone, you know, there was a couple of weeks like when something big comes out on Netflix. Everyone, have you seen it? It's a sin. Have you seen it? It's a sin. Oh my god, what do you think of it? What do you think of it? And and you get invested in it so then when your ca favorite character is going through it or dying or something like that it really brings it home and you're like shit i have to learn about this stuff and that is how th that is actually spiraled um mm -hmm. and and then i got in touch with you and then i do I'm, I'm a broadcast journalist student and so um i i i am doing a podcast there on uh, hiv and aids where we go back to the 80s and right. we, uh, you know all that sort of stuff so um mm -hmm. i think the, that stuff like that has a big impact on society and, and getting them to learn about it because as we said at the beginning right. it's, it's everyone's responsibility to learn about it not just the people that have it i agree because it's not just again you know you, you you touched on that earlier it's not a gay disease it's, it's a disease that's going to affect everybody and yeah. you know i think the more that you understand i mean you know i think now you know there's prep there's a lot of different um resources that we that people didn't have back then you know you can take prep that really prevents you that it's like you know it's like if you think about it, it's like taking uh, the pill, the concentrated the pill. pill, the concentrated. Yeah. So it really prevents you from catching it. And I think if that's really, if that's made, um, if you have access to that or anybody has access to that gay, whatever you sexually active, I think you should take it. I think it's something 100%. that you need to prevent it. Um, if I could have back then, I probably would have, if I had access to that in the UK, I, it wasn't available, um, you know, on NHS or anything available to people because I think they were just doing it as a trial. Yeah. Um, I think it would really help. I think if it was something that was offered to everybody, you know, free, um, yeah. it would really help, you know, a lot of people. 100%. And, and I guess, and again, though, like even, but you'll still find people going, oh, what do I need that for? What do I need? Straight nosed fellas. Oh, what do I need that for? What do I need that for? Uh, even, you know, people in the gay community, what do I need that for? And that's just because there's so much stigma around it that like, right. what what am I going to get? Oh, no, I will never get that. Never, oh, that's not me. And even, even if you're seen taking it, oh, oh, have you got it? Oh, do you know what I mean? And there's so much stigma around it. The more we talk about it, the more it's accepted socially and the more we can yeah. sort of combat it, right? Yeah, I think uh, yeah, definitely think so. Yeah, for sure. Not don't be ashamed of it. You know, if, the, if yeah. it's something that it's affected you. Hundred percent, Lenny. Final question, and mm -hmm. this is you're the second guest that I've ever asked this to. Right? I've started doing it because like, you see podcasters, right, and people that do interviews, they have like a thing. So like mm -hmm. a true jo like there's a, there's a guy called True Jordi who I always watch. He's a podcaster, right? And he'll always mm -hmm. ask at the, at the end of the podcast. He'll go, "How would you like to be remembered?" So I was like, "Okay, I can't copy that exactly, but what can I do that's similar?" Right? So what I've what I've come up with is if you had to give one person one piece of advice, what would you get? What would you say to them? 
I would say to Donald Trump, don't run for president again. Just give it up. Fuck take, off. Yeah, take a day off, Donald. Right. Yeah. Go yeah. off. Go fuck off and die. I'm literally <laughs> No, just don't run for presidency ever again. Okay. You don't need yeah. to do that. <laughs> what about what about a broader piece of advice to to some, just in general? A piece of advice. If you're on your deathbed, you're sat there, you go like that. Oh, you're 84. Like, oh, I'm going, I'm going, I'm, I'm dying. And then someone goes, right. Oh, but what what would you? What was your last words be? What's your one piece of advice for life? Live it. <laughs> there you <laughs> go. Just live your life. <laughs> live it. Live your life. Just I'll live put you on the spot there, have I? Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I mean, I would, yeah, just live your life, man. Life's too short. Yeah, yeah, brilliant. I mean, Lenny. I'm sure a lot of people have said that. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you're the second guest. Last, but last guest said he was. He was called John Hargrove. He was a. Uh, mm. He's a. He, what, he was a sea. What he was a trainer at Killer Whale Trainer at Sea World. Since uh-huh. has come out and has sort of campaigned against Sea World and stuff like that. Um, and he said, uh, what did he say? He said he, he finds it very sad when people don't know their passion and their and and what they want to do so he was like just put your mind to anything and just like run with it and then you'll figure it out from there like try it and he, and he started saying like good if advice. yeah it, it, it's, it's good advice isn't mm-hmm. it it's, it, it was like if, it's very if good. he said if i he said i believe that if one person commits 100 percent to one thing nothing can stop them and you will you will succeed so if you can just do that something that you're passionate about you'll be happy so that's that, that was his one but yeah you're the second one live your life live life there you go Lenny Royal live, live life, life. <laughs> <laughs> Lenny thank you so much for joining me on the show today mate I hope you have enjoyed it sorry if I've uh, brought up anything but it is really appreciated appreciated um, because ultimately as we spoke about you know talking about it and educating people mm-hmm. is at the at the utmost priority so thank you mate thank you for coming okay. on Thank you for having me. (laughs) My pleasure, mate. Thanks, guys. Hope you guys at home have enjoyed the show. Uh, Make sure to like, subscribe. We need all the views, likes, subscribes we can get at the moment, right? So get liking, get commenting, get subscribing, and we'll see you guys in the next episode. Ta-da.